which audience is for the organ? This is just as a short introduction to uh, what we're doing here in the Orgelpark, and then we blend into a, a nice conversation with two wonderful people, Matthew Sledetsky and Marianne Wurle from the Gamut Inc. Well, corporation, I might always say, from Berlin, working with organs and doing wonderful things with their Aggregate Festival. They will perform a short piece as well. Just to get a bit of background on that and a big bit of background on the Orgelpark, I'd like to address a few things, and that's this. So the current focus of what we have today and that we're normally doing is uh, looking for new audiences for traditional applications of the organ, which is fine, of course. Uh, but you see, there's many more things. So the idea is to address also new audiences that already work with the organ in a very different way. I think we have already had two examples of that. So um, Jakob, Jelleke Kerk, I just mentioned that, is a guy that works with spaces, playing the cathedral, not being the organist of the organ, but be, being the player of an acoustic, of a big acoustic. That's the outer Kerk space. And you can imagine how that sounds. This is the organ. And what Jakob did in the, in a, for the inauguration of the organ in the outer Kerk two years ago, in 2019 it was, three years ago, was inviting Nicolas Jaar from a very different realm of making music. And he managed to get about, what was it, Jakob? About 3,000 people on one day. Young people, half of half of it was really young people listening to the organ, enjoying the sounds, and not having any, any problem with that instrument. So no, there's, there's things happening just like you said before, Cathy, in your, in your speech. I skipped this through a bit quickly, more quickly than I planned because of the clock. But um, there's the other one, sounds. So last week, Kaylee Malone came along to prepare for the symposium that we have in June, also about you know, what you can do with organs. And she fell completely in love with that organ. Just listening to that type of wonderful medieval sounds. And she even invented on that very day a new way of playing that instrument. And I have to lay down my microphone to just show, yet, so show that to you. So she laid her hand under the keys, that you can do that there. And then her fist really pushing. And she found a way in that way to really control the opening of the keys and the way the wind entered the pipes. So there's many more of them as well. There's not only Kaylee, there's Sarah Devachi, there's Annie Garlit, Ellen Arkbre. A third new audience that work with, works with organs is the group, well, groups like TCPIP, uh, Stefan Oestershow and Federico Fisi in the north of Sweden. They practice telematic musicking. So what they do is connect instruments through the internet and make a new ensemble that lives both online and offline. And the nice thing is that you can do that with organs as well. See, we did that actually last June on the symposium that we had here. They did that uh, for the um, uh, uh, new interface for musical instrument conference in Shanghai. So they were here, but did a presentation for Shanghai. And I just show a little snippet of that. So they actually got the, the first prize, one of the prizes at the conference for being, well, uh, one of the most interesting uh, uh, contributions to this to this one to, to this great conference. We were sitting here in the Orgelpark listening to the piece in Shanghai. They were sitting well on their laptops and with, with the headphones on, and you know in Stockholm there's an audience as well. So where is the audience actually? That was a very nice question. That's something that we will pursue further. So that's the third one. Then. I like to call that hyper-organ. It's a term 
that was invented by uh, Todd Machover in Massachusetts Institute for Technology. In the 70s already, he made hyper pianos, hyper violins. And I'm not the one that invented that term for organs. That was Randall Harlow. He's working with us on this very project. He will come the next summer, I think three months, to work with us on this project. So he invented this term, hyperorgan. Well, that is, let me put it like this, a pipe organ that reclaims its core dynamic qualities by embracing technologies that unmachine control of sound, color, and wind flow. First, a little movie. She will perform tonight as well on the Big Van Straten organ, Catalina Vicens. But I found this wonderful little movie online where she plays the organetto. And you know, that illustrates much better than I can say what I mean with this original dynamic qualities. so forth. Uh, we, will have, we will put a link to this wonderful movie online. The point is that, um, well, there she is, actually, just coming into the room. We just show a movie of you. Well, let, let's applaud for her and welcome her to the room. Catalina. <laughs> so that's what I mean, the core dynamic qualities. I believe that organs actually, like Catalina shows and demonstrates, are actually really dynamic instruments. And that we've sought through history by inventing new technologies in the 18th, in the 19th, in the 20th century, and in the 21st century to reclaim that dynamic quality. And I think that this hyper-organ stuff that we have here with this seemingly very complicated console, it's not actually, uh, to, to get that back. So be able to work with wind, work with sounds, and you know, like Jacob's improvisation already demonstrated. Which brings me, and I jump just to the next slide, to the Gamut people. So, here we are. The fourth one, automatic ma music making, because I said unmachine. An organ, of course, is always both an instrument and a musical machine. And we like to have technology that helps us to unmachine the, uh, the music that you make on that. 